The origin of the supercar tracks back to the 1960s when manufacturers like Lamborghini, McLaren, Ferrari, and even Ford decided to push the envelope with beautiful styling on a mid-engine platform. We're building a tribute to these icons based on a $500 Boxster chassis and my dad's Ford V8 engine. You're watching Project Jigsaw. We've been working very closely with Juan Noguera, who, which if you may remember has been in previous videos with us helping along with 3D modeling and scanning. He is a design professor at RIT. Juan has 3D modeled our car and has been doing a bunch of back end work so we can get a solid rendering to show you guys the vision we're working towards. And right now we have a couple that he shot over our way that are very close to what we're looking at. So this is a little tease of what's coming on the horizon and what the car is going to look like. However, don't get married to this because this is not the final product. What are you doing, Tony? Making a mess. No, actually I'm making saw horses so we don't have to kill our knees on the floor while we're annealing. <laughs> Before we do anything, we need to anneal some more aluminum, and this time we're going to use map gas because apparently there's an acetylene shortage, so that's fun. Barbershop pole or a candy yeah. cane? I was going to say candy cane, but yeah. If you're new here, we're just annealing this tubing so that we can actually bend it without it breaking. You can learn more about annealing in our previous videos or just by, you know, Googling it. So we have this half of the clamshell and aluminum tubing, which is the framework that's gonna hold our skin. Last week we did this corner in wire so we can visualize and get actual proportions for the shape of the rest of the nose. So now we need to turn this wire into aluminum tubing to match the rest so we can begin skinning the entirety of the front clamshell. So what we're gonna do here, uh, we're gonna start out with extending this valley to here and to here in aluminum tubing, which will give us a good base to measure off of to continue out from like, so we can measure that corner, etc. Now to do that, we have a typical carpenter's laser level, which we use often for work in the shop. You can see actually right now that the laser's already lined up on the peak right here of the wire frame. I mean, it's not gonna show up on the camera from there, but it's, it's there. That means all I need to do is measure the distance from the center to there, do the same this way, and then it already is located vertically because the laser will paint it. And then we can uh, weld our piece from boop, boop. Plan B. Plan B. Use this clamp instead. Well, plan A is usually just a starting point. Otherwise, you wouldn't even bother to name it plan A. You would just call it the plan. The plan, exactly. The mission always changes. Right angle on the floor of the clamp to hold it vertical, measured this distance here, measured from here to the cowl there, or, you know, front of the tub. So it's exactly the point it needs to be. Use Clico clamps to lock this into place. Clamp the top edge. Now it's perfectly symmetrical to that side. Definitely some big brain moves going on right here. I'm pretty proud of what I just came up with just now to get this thing jigged up where it needs to be. Let's weld it. This video has been paid for and sponsored by Top Don. This is the Top Scan, an easy to use OBD2 port reader that connects directly to your phone through Bluetooth. The top scan connects in mere seconds and is extremely easy to use. 
It provides full system diagnosis for 70 plus brands, eight plus reset functions, including oil reset, throttle adaptation, and more. And if you're getting ready to have your car inspected, you can even check your fault codes to make sure you'll pass. One feature that's kind of neat about the top scan is it also provides repair guidance. So it'll read your code and be like, hey, Maybe you should check this first. It's a little bit like having a mini mechanic in your pocket. A standout feature of the top scan is also its bi-directional control, which means in short that you can send signals back to modules so you can bleed ABS, reset minders, actuate servos, you name it. Hit our link in the description down below and use our code to get 5% off your top scan. Ryan, I leave you for a few 15 minutes. I got tired of waiting because Tony had to get a phone call and a customer. There's a bunch of stuff. Right. Um, I messed up. I had this whole planned out. I forgot that we have plastic right here, which is jigging it into place, and I melted the crap out of it, and it sucked down, and when it did that, it misaligned the tip down here too. Look, look at this. <laughs> I can put my finger underneath it now. Oh no. So what I'm doing is I'm holding this in place so it cools so the plastic holds it where it's supposed to be. And then we'll, uh, maybe I'll put some vice grips there so I'm like, I have to kind of hold it in place as I fix this. Either way, whoops. Yeah. You'll have that on these bigger jobs. Whoops. Yeah, so we can definitely use this, the same treatment Correct. again. Basically, you gotta locate that point, then we can take that profile, oh and you should fine. be able to just flip yeah. it yeah. and be good, because it's like 2D just at an angle. Here, I'm gonna have to triangulate points. off of something because just measuring from one point to one point I could be, there, there's a whole arc that I could be on. So I'll just measure out a point from center on each side, and then I can use the square off of that same point. I see what you're using, you're using the straight edge here. Yeah, like this. I build you know. up the tolerances, but I think what we're doing, we're fine. I wouldn't have to measure off center, except it's just we're coming out farther than my square will reach. So we'll just give a reference point on each side, maybe to the where the valley is, and go from there. That's a good plan. Yeah. Square is that bad you can't read it, so you have to just use tape and marker <laughs> to mark your measurements. Bring it around from the other side. <laughs> Eight this thing. So you're measured from back there, squared out, butted up to here to be uh, compensated for the width of the ruler, and there we go. We got Good. our floating point now. Yeah, our hoop that we bend, come in and kiss that point right there. Wow. And come over. I would like to use this. But my time lapse is there. Yeah, I know, but it's a tool. This is a tool! <laughs> This side next, do you think? No, no I think. No, because that, yeah. well, that's going to go over there. I think next, what we need to do is cut this back so we can and cope that, that so that your piece can slide in like against there. it, and yep. then you can cope that in yep. once you know. Right. Yep. It's all copacetic. Go, Tony. Good job. Yeah, no. You've shaped the hardest tube in the front nose. Now just, just hand me the welder, and I'll get this tacked up. There you go. Yeah. Man, it's, right it's like it's right on the line. That's yeah. perfect. You can get that out of there now. Don't worry, you want to do one more of those. <laughs> so on this side, you can see there's like a little joggle for like uh, an idea of shape. On this side, we did not put that in because. That'll be done on the skin and not on the framework. 
and we don't want to like lock ourselves into that shape exactly before we agree upon it. Yep, that will work out fine. It's structure, not a buck. Tony's got that look again. The I want to change things look. What do you want to change? My brain is going to slow down our process. Oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the last hoop we made, we did shape it to the wire, but as this fills out with a beefier tube and you can kind of look at the whole thing, I honestly had a little bit of concern with the wire, but it's hard, it was harder to visualize. I think there's not enough radius in here. It's not, it's not flowing into the last piece. And I think this is a little sharp and this is turning into a, a corner. I mean, and, and there's some angularity to this car, but I think this is gonna just create a problem for us it's right a here. Too much angle. Yeah, yeah. So we need to cut it loose, rebend that, probably rebend and rebend this, and then put it back up in place and weld it again. Womp womp. I feel much better about that. Yeah, me too. You were right. You never regret going back and doing things the way you feel like you should have. You always regret not going back and doing things the way you feel like you should have. <laughs> <laughs> Wiser words never been spoken. Tony Miller, 2024. There you go. Our reinforcements arrived. A brand new tub of ink saws, my favorite. Up next is this vertical piece that's gonna go from the valley straight down. Now, this piece will probably not be staying in the long run because we're gonna have you know intakes for the center radiator and other things. That being said, though, we still need that support for now, which you can cut out later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this little vertical piece that goes straight down, so then we can tie that in to the other piece that wraps around back to the edge of the wheel well here. And then that'll make this one solid piece that we can then duplicate for the other side. While we're getting all this work done, I'm printing another one of these headlights so we can have two of them to mock up on the car. And many of you have been asking about like this whole situation up here where it's like the 80s style wood wall paneling and such. This is our studio space where I edit our videos and do the CAD work and everything else that we need for 3D printing and all the other modeling work. And will eventually be the office as well for Tony. His desk is gonna go back over there in that pile of mess whenever we get around to it. But what's nice about it is it overlooks the shop we can see our projects down below as we're working up here. It will also turn into like a, our print farm area. We have all of our 3D printers and other things that we want to keep clean from the uh, body shop dust. If you're wondering about a mic change this video, our uh, lapel mics died. I ordered brand new ones that are upgrades, but yeah, not for this week. Annealing, round 35 it feels yeah. like. Yeah, I know.
So now that this side is tubed in, we need to work on the passenger side. But before we do that, we want to get the center fully worked out. Cause like right now you can see the arc here doesn't really line up right. Cause we left a tail on it needs to be cut back. We want to get that all solidified. And then we're going to go from there to the passenger side. We might need to get rid of our wireframe now. Yeah, that's a big step. Part of the reason that we're doing the center first as well is because the thing called a buildup of tolerances. We did some measurements off of the clay model over on the table and then used them as reference when we did our wire form. So those measurements are multiplied times six. So one millimeter difference becomes a six millimeter difference, which is actually a decent amount. Like right now, for example, the tubing right here is approximately, I would say about seven millimeters longer than the end of the wire on this side. Not a big deal because I like how it looks, so it's okay. However, we can't fully use the wireframe as a guide now at that point. So we need to get it out of the way and also confirm the same measurement being copied and tubing on the passenger side is what we want, in fact, and that we can flow the arc the way we want to. Otherwise, we'll be reworking the driver's side, so why make the passenger side first? Because then it's doubling the work. I feel like I'm saying a lot of things are all over the place right now. That's kind of hard to follow, so I'm just going to do the work and we'll show you. Wow, that bends a lot easier. I think we're getting this annealing thing down. Tubing wall is a lot thicker than anything else we've been, we have annealed in the past. And so it just, you had to be slow with it and let the Sharpie disappear. If you were too quick, you could get the Sharpie to go away, but you were only really getting the surface to the right temperature, so. It's officially time, Tony. Wireframe's coming off. Nice. It's in our way. Cause this piece goes from here and it hits there. You can't, yeah. can't make it work. We got all kinds of pieces that are going in here. All kinds. All kinds. It's like yeah. a jigsaw puzzle. Your voice is rattling around in my brain. I can't think. <laughs> it looks so lonely now. It does. It we just destroyed it. We ruined it. All that work <laughs> in the last video, gone. But we're making room for this. Oh, look at that shiny. This is big, big boy. I wanted it the really biggest is. one we could fit in there. Hopefully it will <laughs> fit in there. We can actually fit in there, yeah. That's why we're checking this quick before we uh, work on that next week. The angle is Look coming. at that. Oh, baby. Look at that. That is a perfect fit. Nice. We're gonna have to modify that. You don't like but that? That's a problem for a different day. Yeah, yep. Woo! When we said center radiator, we really meant it, didn't we? Oh yeah, it's in the center. And that's gonna look awesome. It's taking up all the center. It really is. <laughs> where, where am I gonna put my golf clubs, Tony? Oh wait, I don't golf. No. Or any sport, for the matter. <laughs> your putter for your uh, putt-putt will fit in the- I do like mini between golf. Between the seats, yeah. Perfect. All right, confirmed. That's that's next week. So we're okay. gonna we're yeah, gonna so we're gonna pull it back out. out of the way. Yeah, there's a little tease. What we were doing. There's a little tease towards what we're going towards. We gotta figure out that center vent, but that's not now. Oh, I had a grind mode. Oh, yeah. 69 amps to the eyes is not pleasant. I wear my sunglasses inside. So I can, so I can not see what I'm doing. My eyes are failing me. I can't see my hands in front of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Don't my. trust my bands when I can't see. <laughs> oh no. When I can't. Yeah. Oh, I really can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Tony wears those shades when he's filming me welding so he doesn't get welder's flash. And he forgot to take them off so we had to, you know.
Ready to weld it? Ready. That looks really good. Yeah, it does. You're getting dialed in on your tube work. Which is good because we have a whole another end of the car to do later, so. So our new mic showed up. We probably sound really nice right now, Tony. I think we probably sound great, and I don't even know if I can rub against it. Yeah, Tony likes to scrub his beard against his mic, which is a problem in editing, but. It's not a problem for my beard. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem for me. What are you doing? I just want to see something. I just want to look at this profile in one flat plane. You're still questioning the bended? Bend I always question everything. That's fair. Constantly. That looks pretty good. I just wanted to see it. You know, in a flat plane. I mean, th yep. that, that's certainly a, yeah. a line with yep. a curve in it. Yeah. Feel better now? I do. Okay, yep. good. I mean, looking at it, I, I felt pretty good about it, but I figured this was this was easy. Not to like toot our own horn or anything, <laughs> but just looking at these curves and the lines and the symmetry, just the flow of the three this. Three dimensions, the three all dimensions. All done like kind of free form and, yeah. you know, holding it in place while we close our eyes and mm -hmm, tacking it mm -hmm, together. Mm -hmm. I'm really impressed with us. I mean, 95% of this is bent over our knees <laughs> or using a random tool that's not meant for bending at all. We've tweaked so many things and yet like this gap here to the tire, both sides is identical still. Mind blowing. Good job, I'm, Ryan. I'm proud of us. The final piece, it's time. Now who's over bending the tubing? Shut up, nerd. <laughs> All right, all right, I give in. My knees hurt today. <laughs> yes, I've had this the whole time. Uh, Ooh, that sounded like an old man getting nice. down to the floor. <laughs> I mean, I'm 30, so. Oh, Wait, yeah. yeah I'm 31 so old. now. Yep, now you are old. <laughs> I genuinely forget. <laughs> That ought to do it. We got our tubing for the front clamshell finished. So now we have a foundation and a gauge to start bending some sheet metal. Come back next week for more progress on Jigsaw. Where do you find a $500 Boxster? People are wondering if you can really find a $500 Boxster. And actually, I've bought three Boxsters at $500 each at different times, but yeah. Tony? Yeah. I need to flex some people that hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the business, so the opportunities are different. I'm not. I'm not searching eBay to find them <laughs> or the or, or Facebook. Um, you don't even have a Facebook. Well, that's why I'm not on there. <laughs> that's not the place you find $500 boxers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>